Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sweet potato souffle. That's right, it's a proven fact that people love puffy food. And my all-time favorite puffy food is souffle. And not just because souffles are gorgeous and delicious and versatile, but also because people think these are really hard to make, which they most certainly are not. All right, not even close. Especially the sweet potato version, which eliminates like half the usual steps. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by roasting a couple sweet potatoes. And I do recommend the orange flesh variety for this. Okay, sometimes even the ones that are red on the outside are actually white on the inside. So what I'll do if I'm not sure is give them a scrape and I'll check the color. And these were in fact orange. And then what we'll do before we roast these is sort of prick them here and there with the tip of a knife because apparently that lets the steam out and they won't explode. Hey, that's what I heard. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and cook these either by roasting them in the oven or doing them in the microwave, which is what I did. But either way, we're going to roast or cook these until they're very, very, very tender. All right, one of the only ways to screw up this recipe is to not cook these soft. And then we're just going to let these sit until they're cool enough to handle. And I could have waited a little longer since these were still really hot. And this step hurt a little more than it should have. But I should mention these are way easier to scoop if they're warm or hot than if they're cold. And of course, if you're smart, you could always put a towel in your hand. But anyway, we'll go ahead and scoop out all that beautiful, soft, tender, golden flesh. And if you've cooked these long enough, you should end up with a pretty smooth mash. But if not, feel free to blitz these in your food processor or just work them over with a potato masher. And then what we'll do once we're done with those tuber maneuvers is move on to the rest of the prep, which will include separating some eggs. Okay, we're gonna put the yolks in one bowl and the whites in another. And we could do that using the classic shell-to-shell -shell method, or the more fun and provocative, let the white slip through your fingers method. Okay, both will work, but no matter which one you use, remember, it's always okay to get a little bit of the white in the yolks, but we never wanna get any of the yolk in the whites, because that's gonna make it a lot harder to whip. So please be careful. And then once our eggs are separated, the only other prep we have to do would be to butter some ramekins very, very generously. Okay, do not be shy with the butter and rub it all over, all the way to the top of the rim. And as you can see, we're gonna cook these on a baking sheet. And once those are set, we can move on to make our souffle batter, which could not be easier, since all we're gonna do is add one generous cup of our mashed sweet potatoes to our bowl of egg yolks, and we'll also toss in a splash of milk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and season this very simply with nothing more than some kosher salt and a very enthusiastic shaking of cayenne. And then we can take a whisk and give this a mix. And by the way, whenever you're mixing ingredients where one is thin and one is thick, your splashing potential is extremely high. So we want to go a little bit slow when we start. And then once it comes together, you can crank up the RPMs. And once we do have that mix nice and smooth, we can move on to our egg whites, which we're going to beat with a whisk, but not before adding a pinch of salt. And that's not just for flavor. That salt's also going to help us whip these up into beautiful peaks. And in case you're tempted to use your mixer, don't. Okay, this is gonna happen in a surprisingly short amount of time. Okay, so just use nice long circular strokes until we have some very luxurious, relatively soft, but still well-defined peaks. So those are looking perfect right there. And then once those are set, we're gonna add exactly half to our other bowl and we will sort of fold and stir that in. And the reason we're doing two additions is this first one just lightens the mixture to get it ready for the second addition which is the much more important addition. So this first half, we don't have to use quite as light a touch. Okay, we can be a little more aggressive with it. And then once we have that first half folded in, we'll go ahead and add the rest. And we'll go ahead and fold that in, being a little bit careful not to knock out too much of the air. Okay, so basically we're working our spatula underneath, bringing that batter up over the top. And as we're doing that, we're turning our bowl. And eventually in a minute or two, we should have everything nicely folded in. And the better you are at doing this, and the more air you retain in this mixture, the higher these souffles are gonna puff. And one very important thing here is knowing when to stop. Okay, we're only gonna spatulate this until the egg whites have almost, but not quite totally disappeared. All right, they're gonna be like 96% incorporated. But if we happen to see a little egg white here and there, that's fine, because that's all gonna get mixed in as we spoon these into the ramekins. Which, by the way, is the next step. So let's go ahead and take a spoon and carefully transfer that in being as gentle as humanly possible. And I'm gonna suggest we fill these all the way to the top. 
And by the way, the amount of mixture we made is going to make between four and six, depending on the size of your ramekin. So I actually could have baked a fifth one, but I didn't have the ramekin prepped. So I just did four for the video. And that's it. Once those are filled, we're ready to transfer them into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so, or until they're beautifully browned and fully inflated and hopefully look a little something like this. And as I probably mentioned in every other souffle video we've ever done, if you're gonna take pictures and or impress your friends, make sure you do that right when these come out of the oven because they are gonna deflate in a matter of minutes. All right, I took some pictures and this is what they look like literally three minutes later. Okay, still gorgeous and amazing, but they just don't have quite the same verticality. And then what we'll do to serve is carefully transfer that onto a plate. And then I decided just for fun to garnish the top with a fried sage leaf, which of course is optional and up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the pips of what looks like green lips. But anyway, let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in while this is still hot. And I could not have been happier with the taste or texture. All right, we want this moist, but not wet. And it really should be feather light with a texture that's ethereal, bordering on otherworldly, which is pretty much what I achieved. And the flavor really was that of pure sweet potato, which is what I was going for here. But in the blog post, I'm gonna give you some other ideas of what to add to this, as well as how to turn it into an amazing dessert. So above and beyond being beautiful and delicious, this is very versatile and will work as a first course or dessert, or we could even unmold them, which will totally work if you use enough butter and serve them like this as a side dish. Oh yes, a platter of those would look nice next to your turkey. So just another idea. Speaking of which, if you were just thinking, I would take some maple syrup and stir in a whole bunch of cayenne and use that to garnish the plate. I like how you're thinking, because that's what I thought. And it really did work out amazingly well. But anyway, that's it. How to make a sweet potato souffle. Whether you end up doing this as a fantastic first course, or a sublime side dish, or an extremely light yet still decadent dessert, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.